Hello, and welcome to the eighth video in my series on using the TI-83 series calculator. This video will focus on the basic aspects of matrices, starting with how to input matrices, then how to add, subtract, and multiply matrices, and some of the more important functions regarding matrices. Now, first notice that the matrix is the second function of the X inverse button. So let's press second, matrix, and it brings us to this menu. Mine is blank in this area, but yours may or may not have matrix dimensions listed, depending on what you or the previous owner of the calculator has been doing. Either way, it's nothing to be concerned about. This is a list of the matrices that are currently stored in the calculator. The calculator stores matrices as letters with brackets around them, but FYI, you can't just put brackets around a letter and try to store it as a matrix. It has to come from this menu. You can, however, use the store command to store a matrix into one of these variables from this menu. Okay, now to get right to the point, how to enter a matrix. Go to the matrix menu, then go to the third page, which says edit. Select which variable you want to use. I'm going to use A. Then enter the dimensions of the matrix and the individual entries. Now go back to the home screen, then go back to the matrix menu and select the variable from the first page. It takes you back to the home screen and puts the variable in the input string. Hit enter to see the matrix. Now you can do matrix operations right on the home screen. So I want to add these two matrices. First I input them as A and B. So I go to the matrix menu, go over to edit, select A, change the dimensions to 2, 2, input 4, 7, 8, 2. Now I go back to the matrix menu, to the edit page, and select B, and put 2, 2 as my dimensions, input my entries. Now I go back to the home screen before I go back to the menu. If you don't leave the editor before going to the matrix menu, it'll do something funky. It'll try to input a matrix into a matrix, and that just doesn't work. So I go back to the matrix menu, select A to put on my home screen, hit plus, go back to the menu, and select B. Hit enter, and it returns the sum of the two matrices. The other operations, subtraction and multiplication, work the same way. I've never actually tried dividing matrices because that's technically not an operation for matrices, but you can find inverses of matrices by using the inverse key the same way you would with a real number. Just put the matrix or variable for a matrix on the home screen and hit inverse, and then hit enter. And notice that I'm telling the calculator to return the answer in fraction form because matrix inverses rarely have uh, integer entries. Now every time anybody says anything about matrices, there seems to be some sort of moral obligation to remind everyone that matrix multiplication is not commutative. As in, A times B is not necessarily the same thing as B times A. And as you can see, you can demonstrate this on the TI-83. So what happens when you have a really big matrix? Look what happens when I try to enter a 3 by 6 matrix. It doesn't fit on the home screen, but I can hit the right arrow key to scroll to the right to see more of it. If that doesn't work, it probably means that something interrupted it. So try hit entering answer and hitting enter again, and then try scrolling again. Now for the functions regarding matrices. Go back to the matrix menu and go to the second page. You'll see a list of commands. The first is the determinant command. You can see that it looks like any other function. You select it, and it brings you to the home screen. You put a matrix inside of it, and it tells you the determinant. The next command is the transpose command. You use this after the matrix, almost like a power, exactly like you write it on paper, and it'll return the transpose of the matrix. The identity command returns the identity matrix with the dimension that you specify. So if you type in identity3, it returns the 3x3 three three identity matrix. The next two functions are very important and very useful. Row echelon form and reduced row echelon form. They work exactly as you would expect. 
You put the function on the home screen. Let's use RREF because it goes further and I like it better. Enter the matrix. In this case, let's use this one. Hit enter and it returns the reduced row echelon form. Just as a quick reminder, reduced row echelon form is unique, but row echelon form is not. So if you find row echelon form by hand and then my calculator, don't be surprised if they're different. But if you get reduced row echelon form by hand and by calculator, they will be the same unless you've made a mistake. The last ones are row operations, and they can be kind of hard to use. If you master them though, they are actually easier to use than doing them by hand. I'm going to go over them one at a time. To use row swap, select it from the menu, select the matrix you want to use, I'll use the same one as before, hit comma, enter the number of the first row you want to swap, hit comma, enter the number of the second row you want to swap, then hit enter, or close the parentheses if you need to. Okay, next is row plus. This adds one row to another. Go to the menu and select row plus. Then select the matrix you want to use, in this case the same one as before. Hit comma, enter the row that you don't want replaced first, then comma, then the row that you do want to replace, and hit enter. Next is row multiplication. Go to the menu and select it, then hit the scalar first, then enter the matrix, then enter the row that you want to multiply by that scalar, hit enter, and get your result. Now for row addition, but this time with multiplication by a scalar. Select it from the menu, select the scalar, select the matrix, enter the row that you don't want to be replaced, which will also be the row that's multiplied by the scalar, enter the row that you want replaced, hit enter, and get your result.